you'd like to do. Uh, if you have a question, please put your hand up and wave it a bit like this. I'm looking into the light and I'll do my best to see you. And if you could speak as concisely and loudly and briefly as possible, I'll repeat the question for the benefit of everybody at the back. So now with this notion the rules make the fun, right? So <laughs> Uh, please join me in welcoming back and congratulating Director Creed Stenley. Um, so, everyone who had run up before can make them up, please. Uh, Teresa, Luke, Larry, Cher, Tanya, Daniel, Chu Fu. That's a good question. He's asked, when you're making a non-linear film like this, how do you keep all the pieces straight in your head? How do you keep all the relationships straight in your head? Uh, with great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just, um, look, it's, you break it down, you put it, I had a big wall in my office and mapped it all out and we did it two ways. We had the film in chronological order, which isn't the screen order you saw, and so we had all the events chronologically and then we had it in, in screen order. So I had two walls and you just reflect and back and backwards and forwards and I was the only one who really knew what was going on. Everyone just else just followed me. So I said, trust me, don't worry. It's meant to be two o'clock here, believe me, I've done the math. Don't worry. Tell us a little bit about Eagle's Nest and all the beautiful scenery that surround it, what a place it is. Uh, well, Eagle's Nest, that's a really good question actually, because I'll answer it a little bit differently. This movie is set in a movie world, it's not set in, in reality, and Eagle's Nest is actually uh, a composite of a couple of places, a couple of locations on the west coast of Australia. And Eagle's Nest was really just sort of a state of mind, a place in which I felt the story, or we felt the story could be set really, um, it was a perfect stage. So the idea was originally we were going to have, it's going to be populated, but as we started to make the film, we ran, well not ran out of money, but we had to put our money where it was important. So what I really liked was the idea of just these six characters doing crazy shit to each other in this beautiful location. And uh, it was specifically, it was shot in the Margaret River, which is three hours south of Perth, and actually the hotel, the Rock Hotel was shot Two hours walk to Perth, and that's where the land And if anyone knows Tim Winton, that's where he, he wrote or he's written one of his books from. So it's, a, it's quite a special place, very, yeah, very atmospheric. I know Tim Winton, yes. Yes. Uh, I, oh, yes, yeah, over there, please. What did Simon's character whisper to the guy in the car? <laughs> That's a really, really funny question. <laughs> he, he basically, in the script, he's meant to whisper, I've been fucking for weeks. <laughs> but when we did the ADR, it always sounded like that. So I said, Simon, can you come up with something else? And look, I'm not trying to pick note myself here, but he said, <laughs> and if you listen to it, you hear it. <laughs> All right, moving on. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's the last question I'm going to take because there's lots of 
some other people here as well. So be imaginative, think of some questions for these guys. But um, yeah, look, it was very much, um, look, the film's got a number of influences. Um, for those cinephiles out there, there's a beautiful film that I love that Stephen Free has made called The Hit, um, that had John Hurt as a hitman. There's Blood Simple in there, there's Tarantino. There's all sorts of things in there. It's a real kind of smorgasbord. And, you know, it was very much, I said to everyone, look, we're going to make a derivative movie. And I meant derivative in a really positive way. Like, we're going to really take this movie by the balls and have fun with it and own our influences. So it's a real, you know, it's look, it's everything. You know, all those things you mentioned are spot on. And hopefully we've managed to do something that still kind of stands on its own and can be enjoyed. I'm going to stand here. Are there some over there, please? Ha, ha, ha. 
um, Sullivan, who is normally, in many of his roles, a real badass, to quote, um, what was it like to boss a man like that around? It was awesome. <laughs> um, especially because it was Sully, and I've known Sully for so long. We did a film years ago called December Boys together. Um, and uh, he was just so gung-ho. He was so happy to be whipped like that. <laughs> he didn't mind it at all. He really just threw himself into it. And it was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> um, but it was really fun. I mean, I got to kick him. I got to, I mean, I, I called him a fat F-U-C-K at one point. <laughs> Did it make the cut? I'm just talking about that. But um, <laughs> he, he, was, um, he was so happy to do it. He would have this little quiver and he'd get tears in his eyes and I was yelling at him. I mean, it felt amazing. <laughs> we really had to turn it down. It was just too much fun. Yeah, it's going to be called either Kill Me Three Times Point Two, or Kill Me Four Times, or Kill Me... <laughs> what was the other one? Is uh, Kill Me Three Times Twice. <laughs> note, I want to thank you very much for bringing the world premiere of the film here. Thank you very much. For